Good afternoon, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your third video blog of the day for Saturday, May 23rd, 2015, around 3.31 in the afternoon, Bellwicker, Massachusetts. Nice and sunny out today, but still, it's below normal. It's about only 61, 62 degrees, breezy. Feels like more like a mid, early to mid-spring day then a, a late spring day this is going to be the last day of the cool weather then summer's coming some news to report the new orleans pelicans are interested in jeff van gundy who used to coach the knicks and the rockets and currently is an announcer for espn and abc's nba coverage we'll wait and see if he gets interviewed and stuff and that's about it on the news my next video blog subject is about the former television station WXPO Channel 50 which was licensed to Wyndham, New Hampshire and they had a satellite studio in Lowell, Massachusetts. WXPO was on the air from October 1969 through June of 1970. It was Boston's third UF, F, UHF station and also the third independent station for Boston area. And WXPO was owned by Merrimack Valley Communications. And they were going to compete with um, the two other independent stations, WKBG Channel 56 and WSBK TV 38 in Boston for to be like a top and in the, one of the, the top independent stations in Boston. And they had a few good ideas um, during the, the daytime. They had a, a over three hour show, which was um, about the stock market, it was an information stuff. Like they updated how the stock market was doing each day. And that went from noon to like 3.15 and 3.15 they had a locally produced version of Rumpa Room, which was at the uh, Wyndham Studio, Wyndham, New Hampshire Studios. The, 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 the stock market show was in the low low Studios. And also they had slapstick f comedy and Warner Brothers cartoons called Treehouse 50, which was a cult hit for um, college students around B Boston area. Also, they had a game show called Bingo at Home, hosted by Don Hill. You could get the bingo cards at home at like local supermarkets. Also, they had an information show about the recap of the stock market called Info 50. But eventually, that turned into a basically a talk show. And they also had reruns of the Michael Douglas show, which was a big talk show back in the um, 60s and 70s. But they had to show this talk, um, Mike Douglas's talk show, about two months behind because WBZ Channel 4 carried Mike Douglas's talk show and they didn't know, they did not want to show the same, same show within, like, that's in the same day. So, and plus they had a few other talk shows and Ch Channel 50 WXPO was the first, um, television station in the country to show, um, to have, like, news updates every hour on the hour. And they had an, a, a local news show, but that news show was hampered because they could not get f um, film and they had to rely on stills from the AP and stuff. Plus they showed horse racing and, and other stuff and other sports, including the low high school football games and some hot, low high school hockey games and stuff. And they did live remotes and they had a New Year's Eve pa party that they aired, but it got especially strange after one in the morning and stuff like that. And they showed reruns of Maverick and Secret Agent Man and Burke's Law, among others, and a few movies and stuff. But WXPO had serious problems because their transmitter was on Dutton Street in Lowell, Massachusetts, but it was right next to WLLH offices at the time, and that had that hampered the signal a lot. Half the times they could not broadcast very good. The quality was poor at best. Spotty coverage in the Boston area because this was before cable TV and stuff. 
And it was another thing that that hampered WXPO's that if any advertisers were going to advertise on WXPO, they could forget about advertising on in the low sun. And a lot of businesses were scared about that because the low sun was a very big newspaper. At the time, it was the biggest newspaper in the Merrimack Valley in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. And the businesses did not want to have a backlash if they advertised on the on the new television station. They would they wouldn't advertise on the low sun, and the low sun got more readers than the new television station. And WXPO was getting no advertisement dollars because very few com companies would take a chance of advertising on their television station and then having having be, be, being forgetting to advertising the low sun they didn't want to lose a lot of money in their businesses and bills were unpaid and stuff by early 1970 90% of WXPO staff was laid off and but a few just managed to continue on the payroll even though they weren't getting paid and stuff by the spring of 1970 the low offices of WXPO was closed down and it's in this signal the end. A lot of the shows were canceled, including the the stock market show and the the, the information fifty show and the local romper room. And they had to cut their um, airing hours to um, eight hours a day. And it looked very grim. In June of 1970, during a Saturday afternoon rerun of Maverick, the power company. Turned off the the it turned off WXPO's transmitter because they did not even pay the power for it to be on for several months, and that was it for WXPO. It never came back on the air, and and in 1973 they actually test tested WXPO's transmitter for about six hours because there was rumors that WXPO was going to return as a CBS owned and operated station because the president of CBS at the time, William, William Pauley, had a summer home in the Lakes region of New Hampshire and he could not get a, a CBS affiliate at his house because this was before cable TV and stuff. The, the signals of the two cl close by CBS affiliates, WANC Channel 7 in Boston and WGAN 13 in, Port in Portland, Maine, did not even reach, did not even get good signals up to the Lakes region. And he really wanted um, see, to see uh, his network CBS from his home in the Lakes region for the summer months. But um, the deal to get WXPO Channel 50 as a CBS owned and operated affiliate um, just died out quickly and stuff. And by 1975, WXPO's um, Channel 50's um, license with the F FCC was terminated and stuff like that. And and the and I I never watched WXPO Channel 50 because I wasn't even born in 1970 and stuff. But what I heard of it, it was it was kind of a channel ahead of its time with like showing information for the stock market and like news updates every hour and showing some sports stuff. It was a little bit of ahead of its time, but the finances was not that great and stuff. And with like the low sun telling the, um, the businesses that you, if you advertise on the television, you, you lose out on advertising and the print of the low sun that scared off a lot and it kind of doomed WXPO from the start also having a, the, one of the transmitters signals located very close to a television station didn't help plus there was no cable TV back then if WXPO came signed on the air a few years later one cable television was starting up in the area it, it would have had a chance but it didn't it's sad and that's about X on the old WXPO Channel 50 in um, Wyndham, New Hampshire slash Lowell, Massachusetts. Be back for the third and final video blog of the night, which will be about
Buck Rogers in the 25th century television show that lasted two seasons on NBC. Have a good day, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And I'm a Julie Brighton guy. Bye.